You know, in the past two and a half years, I have told many types of stories on this channel, from transfixing tales of horror, to real life atrocities performed by man, to gummy bears that will clean your bowels out within minutes, and even a sexually titillating erotic tale between a bellboy and a reptilian Donald Trump. You would think I would have covered it all by now, but that's just not the case. There is one specific genre of stories I have never told before. My stories. And today, I will be changing that, for better or for worse, by giving you three stories about me serving the craziest of people I have ever met while at my job. Now for my own privacy, I will not be telling you the specifics of my position, but there are two important pieces of context that you will need to know. One, I am in a customer service and sales representative position, so I can tell you, I see a lot of different kinds of people throughout the day. And two, I work alone. That's right, I am the only employee at the establishment during the day, meaning I have to serve every customer that walks in and out and be the only one to handle their antics. Yes, that means I have no witnesses, but as any other personal storyteller should do, I give you my absolute word that every single scenario that I'm about to tell you actually happened, with no exaggerations or stretched truths. Or so help me Shane Dawson, may I be crushed under your galaxy Taco Bell filled ass. Trust me, by the end of this one, you're gonna wish the title was a clickbait. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's see if I can make you laugh, or at least smirk, or cringe, with tales of my suffering. Let's just face it, there are a certain amount of people in this world who live solely for the purpose of getting pissed off at the earth, and all of us inhabitants with it. You just can't please everyone. One example of this is the one night I was in the process of closing up shop, when I had a last minute customer rush in, needing to drop off some pants for dry cleaning. Now, I know you all might be a little bit confused as to the whole dry cleaning thing, so let me explain. No, I don't work at a dry cleaners. Rather, we are what is known as a joint, and I'm not talking about your knees or the devil's lettuce. It is essentially a side attachment to our business where we ship out people's clothes to the actual dry cleaner establishment for cleaning and they will ship it back to us where the customer can come back and pay for their order. It is a pretty good system seeing how where my business is located it's at least a 30 minute drive away from the nearest dry cleaning establishment. So it saves people time and gives us some extra business. Now back on topic. The customer comes in and asks if he can drop off some cleaning a single pair of trousers. Very basic. As I was filling out the invoice for his order, I could already tell that he was quite the intense and strict man by his short and snippy answers to my questions and the cold shoulder when I tried my usual small talk banter. Oh well, can't lose sleep over that. People just ignore me in general. I'm used to it. However, I quickly learned that that stick up his ass was up so high that it was poking up his esophagus when I finished processing the order and gave the customer's call ticket. Because that's when I did the unthinkable as he was walking out of the door. I did what any other overworked, underpaid employee does when having to kiss the asses of the uptight. I waved from behind the counter and said, You have a good day, sir. And just as that final word left my lips, the man froze with one hand resting on the door handle. The uncomfortable pause lasted for what felt like a minute before his head turned slowly towards me, revealing a glare that you would only give the person who killed your family, laid curses upon your kin, or the person who ate the last of the Oreos and left the empty box in the cupboard. A look only deserving for the most evil of souls. Admittedly, I trembled a little bit as my mind raced through all the things I could have done that would have pissed him off, but I was snapped back to attention as his gravelly voice started to relay a short phrase that I will never forget. You don't tell me 
what to do. I froze, just standing there with my lower lip quivering as he walked out of the store. I stood like that for a good few seconds to make sure he was gone, before I started bawling in laughter over the desk. I guess I just had to accept the fact that I am a controlling, bossy person. So when he came back a couple of days later to pick up his order, I learned from my mistakes and gave him a final send-off of You have whatever kind of day you want, sir. Yes, I got the same death glare, but no response. I guess that aforementioned stick up his ass went up a little further and destroyed his vocal cords. Look, I'm a big advocate for the term to each one's own. If it doesn't hurt anybody and makes you happy, as far as I'm concerned, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can believe in whatever you want. You can love whoever you want. Not saying that I won't potentially snicker at you from behind the corner, but hey, with this guy I'm about to tell you about, you are gonna have to forgive me because I really don't know how to keep a straight face. I tell ya, it was just another day at the office for me when a new face came into my store. Yes, we are a company where you would come back to it weekly, so I do see the same people mostly, but new customers aren't exactly a marvel either. Though, looking at his yellow, sweat-stained white t-shirt, unshaven face, and coke bottle glasses covered in grease and fingerprints, I could tell already that he was going to be quite the character. He didn't say much as we went through our transaction, but as I was running his purchase through the till, he spontaneously blurted out, You know, they're using chemtrails to keep track of you. My brain, with its infinite ocean of witty comebacks, made me reply with probably the most in-depth inquiry I could come up with. Huh? Yeah, if you couldn't tell by now, sarcasm is one of my strong suits. The dude proceeded to tell me that chemtrails are not what we think. Rather, they are electromagnetic pulses that implant directions and orders in the brainwashed people of today from our corporate overlords. I kept silent the whole time, with probably the most feigned look of interest I could muster plastered all over my face. I wish I could give you more specifics as to what he said, but frankly, I was so shocked at the amount of nonsense spouting out of his mouth at such a rapid rate, I couldn't soak any of it in. After he finished his spiel and put me into a comatose state where I grew a few gray hairs, he finally gathered his belongings and started to head out of the door. But before he did, of course, he had to say the phrase that I was dreading. You're a good kid. I like you. I'll be sure to be back much more often. There's still a lot going on we need to talk about. I nodded slowly, still with my feigned expression. Ha! <laughs> okay, great! See you then! Shit. And that is exactly what happened. He is a man of his word, as well as a nutcase. Every time he comes into my shop, since I met him those few months ago, while I serve him, he always has a new conspiracy to torment me, I, I mean, enlighten me with. And they ain't just the basic ones you read on BuzzFeed at 2am, like 9-11 was an inside job, the lunar landing was staged, the earth is flat, etc. Actually, we did talk about that last one. Though he's more convinced that the earth is pear shaped but that's not the point here rather he tells me about how oil is an artificially inflated importance and is actually just corn oil used during world war one missing people who have vanished without a trace were actually captured by the government and turned into chimeras like that little girl from full metal alchemist except it's bigfoot donald trump is a synthetic human created by the illuminati jeez that's the second time I mentioned that looting in this video. Though, my favorite has to be the one where he believes that all the cats and dogs in his apartment complex are Chinese sleeper agents programmed to spy and sabotage us folk in the West. 
No. 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 I'm not joking. I wish my brain was that creative to think that up. If it was, maybe my YouTube channel would be more successful than it is, and I wouldn't go to bed crying every night. Apparently, he knows this to be true, as the dogs that the other tenants own pee in the outlets of the hallways and on the panels of the elevators, disabling them. And not just peeing, mind you, just the perfect amount of pee to cause damage before walking away. Meh. Perhaps I should just wrap this story up before my brain tries to process any further as to what is the perfect amount of pee in his eyes. Yes, I still see Conspiracy Theory Guy to this day. In fact, at the time of this recording, I just saw him two days ago, and he wanted to talk about time travelers. Just the cherry on top of this messed up and convoluted cake. But he did say one thing as he was walking out that day that sums up everything about him. Ugh, I don't know, man. I just think I'm living in a world of my own creation. You said it, Queen! Not me. And here we are at the end, folks. The story that this video is titled off of. Hold on to your butts, because I'm gonna tell you about a guy who let his go on my door. And if this isn't your kind of thing, it's best you pack your bags and leave this video. Cause things are gonna get nasty. Well, it was already nasty because I was a part of it, but you know, I'm gross. This was during my first summer of my employment. I was horribly behind in my paperwork, and I had to get it to our bookkeeper at the bank before they closed. Of course, it was a Saturday, meaning that they closed early, and I had to have those sheets on her desk before she left that day, or else I would be sunk faster than an OTP ship on an anime subreddit. With only 15 minutes to spare, I printed out my final page and slipped it behind its many sister sheets in my red binder. Closing it, I smiled at its cover, blazing with an otaku's wet dream, as it was covered in an assortment of stickers and decals I've collected from conventions and indie artist shops. Yes, I'm that guy. Weeb trash and Norian scum till the day I die. Anyway, I walked out of the shop and reached into my back pocket to get my key. Remember, I work alone, so whenever I have to leave the store to do stuff like this, I need to lock the door behind me. And of course, it wasn't there. I had left it on my desk. Just my luck! I looked over my shoulder to make sure that nobody was heading towards my store. There wasn't, just an odd-looking man looking up at the sky blankly. Yes, it was strange, but nothing to steal my attention for too long. I placed my binder on the ground beside the door and ran back into the store's back office, grabbing my key. I rushed back to the entrance, but through the glass that the door was made of, I saw a sight that immediately made me halt in my tracks. The aforementioned weird dude from before was now standing closer to my doors, but with one extra feature. His pants were off, and I was staring full on at his bare ass. I don't know what was more amazing. The fact that Donald Trump hasn't been chased out of this country by the populace? Sorry, I know, that will be my last Trump joke. Or that this dude was able to remove his pants in the amount of time I was gone. Look, I know I got a big ass, but I'm not that slow. What were they? Tearaways? No matter, as you could have guessed, I didn't want to get anywhere even close to this guy. But before I could even start to fathom a plan of how to sneak past him, I was starting to consider the Metal Gear Solid style maneuvering with a box. He did the unthinkable. Something that my brain still shudders every time I think about it. This is your cue if you are good with the gross stuff. You gotta leave. This is your final warning. There and then, he started to drop a slimy, wet dookie out of his ass. Literally three feet from my door. The type of shit that plagues the poor soul in a gas station bathroom 
who just wanted to try the nachos at Denny's during a 3 a.m. munchies fest. And this dude was dropping it without breaking a sweat or needing an overrated iPhone game. My brain acted on its own. As I watched the cesspool beginning to grow in size at his feet, my hand reached out towards the lock on the door and I twisted it shut. Hey, that was the smart thing. Like hell, I was gonna confront him. Even if it would have made this story a little bit more interesting. Finally, the assplosion ended. But he wasn't done just yet. Rather, he just stepped out of his pants on the ground and started pissing, of course. And not just standing there urinal style. No, the dude probably thought that the cement needed watering because he started spinning around in a circle, pea stream and all. Look, I've heard of the helicopter, but come on! Have you thrown up yet? No? Good! Then I can continue with the rest of my suffering. The guy seemed to acknowledge the mess he made around him and on himself too, clearly wanting to wipe the sludge off of his ass and legs and out of everything possible he could have chosen. The leaves on the nearby tree, that newspaper in the gutter, hell, even doing the doggy butt scooch on the pavement. He looked to my binder I left on the ground and started reaching out for it. I was frozen in shock. I didn't know what to do. So I just watched as he picked up my binder and opened its pages. RIP! He pulled a page out from its rings. I felt like a parent watching his child being suffocated in the biceps of Josh Hutcherson in The Hunger Games as he crumpled the page into his hands and wiped it through his ass cheeks. Girl, I'm a creative mind on YouTube. I got enough people wiping their asses with my work all the time. I don't need you doing it literally. RIP. Doesn't matter though. Another page, another wipe. As you can guess, it wasn't one of those shats when you can get away with a single wipe. No, of course it was a Chipotle styled splurge where you need the entire roll. Or in this case, every damn piece of paper in my binder. Even when there was no pages left, he ripped the plastic in half. RIP. And used it. Spreading poo poo on my waifu stickers. And to top it all off, because it wasn't gross enough, he puked and then passed out, collapsing into a pile of his filth. Literally, blood, I think he hit his head when he fell, piss and vomit. And shit. A lot of shit. Fortunately, one of the employees working in the business beside my own had a more functioning brain than me. Probably because she didn't have to witness a slaughter of her hard work in the crevices of a drunk's ass. And flagged a nearby police officer walking out of a Tim Hortons, who promptly took care of the slob. Fortunately, I was able to reprint all the pages I needed, as I watched the janitors sweep up my soiled wee binder and throw it in the trash. Where it probably honestly belonged. And I did get to the bank two minutes before it closed. My bookkeeper was standing in front of her office with her arms crossed and just sneered at me. You better have a good story as to why you took so long. Oh girl, trust me, I did. Well that was fucked up. If you enjoyed this video, then why not leave a like and subscribe because I'm posting new videos every day right now and working my ass off. Hey, maybe I'll smile for once. Also, leave a comment and tell me if you want more story times with me. Because trust me, I got a whole lot more up my sleeve and others than just work stories. But I still have a couple of those. Alright, I'm gonna go cry for a little bit to wipe my mind from trudging up all these bad memories and the PTSD with it. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings. And to the mongrel who was in front of my store that day, if you so happen to listen to this video, you owe me a new binder and some waifu stickers. Stay fabulous, everyone. See you tomorrow.